Hi, I'm Dennis DeYoung, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I want to watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're going to watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about Doug. Shalom and welcome to Tape with Rabbi Doug. Glad you could be with us today. My guest today is Simone Elkalis. Welcome to the show, Simone. Thank you. Simone is someone I've known since she was a little girl. Let's see. We are family friends. Yeah. Uh, I was sort of her teacher. I've known her forever, and she's grown up to be a famous author, and I am so glad to have you on the show. We've talked about Thank doing you. this for a long time. Simone has authored four books so far. There's more in the works. She is constantly writing. She's out speaking all the time everywhere. Simone, here you are, um, a, a sh suburban Chicago girl. Um, we both grew up near Golf Mill in the, in the suburbs. Yeah. You know, we're all... Uh, you know, Northwest suburban people. Simone, how did you get into writing the first time? And tell me, how does someone who is, you know, not been a writer first get their, their in, you know, get their foot through the door with publishers? Because you weren't writing things your whole life. You know, I remember in college you were always doing your work and writing and everything, but you weren't writing books. What was the, the beginning of your first book and how did you get it published? <laughs> Oh my God, that's so funny. Um, to be honest with you, I was actually a reluctant reader as a teen. I didn't actually like to read a lot. So if anybody would have told me when I was a teenager, you're going to be a writer when you grow up, I'd be like, you're absolutely nuts. You're crazy. So um, what happened was I was a stay-at-home mom and um, I was bored and I started reading a lot and kind of discovered liking to read as an adult. And one day I was like, wow, instead of reading so many books that I've been reading so much, why don't I write a book? It really was just out of the blue. I don't have a degree in writing. I have a master's in industrial relations, uh, but I, I never took a creative writing class in my life. It really is just, you know, I had an inspiration to write a book and, and I wrote it. the talent was there. The talent was You know, there. it comes. As you write, you kind of teach yourself how to write. Now, here you go. Um, your father born in Israel, your mother born in the Chicago area, um, Father in business and mom a teacher, dad a teacher too in Hebrew mm -hmm. school and stuff. Um, your Abba and and you, you know, grew up with with educated parents and you kind of went into business with your dad and stuff and everything. And you sort of gave it all up for writing. It's and to be a stay at home mom, as you <laughs> said did. too. You know, and you're not I the did. little girl you were before. I mean, I remember when you were young. I remember when you were at my wedding. I remember your wedding party. I, it's, we've been through so many things through yeah. the years, but I never thought you'd be a writer. I never. I thought either. you would be a famous business. You know, uh, you know. It is a business, but it also is a business. It brings out that business because there's the publicity, which is so much a part of being a writer too. Is going out to and being with the team and speaking at schools and speaking at libraries and conferences, which I do all over the place. So it really does kind of, you write, you, you, know, you sit in your little hole in your room and you write, but then you get to be out there and do kind of the business. Now, aspect. before you went to publishing, did you do like some short stories or poetry or anything like that? Or did it just like the story came to your head and you started writing and it turned into a book? I started writing a book about a Native American at first, and then I started writing a book about a Hispanic person. And my friends were like, wait a minute, why aren't you writing about Israel or Jewish people? You're Jewish and your father's Israeli, your husband's Israeli. You've been to Israel how many times? You got married in Israel. And I'm, I didn't want to, I said, I don't know, for all the Jewish books I've read have been depressing. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to write a depressing book. And they said, well, why don't you write a funny book about Israel? And I said, well, I, people don't think Israel's so funny. And they said, well, you do because your family's from there. And let me tell you, Israelis are really funny people. They are funny. And, um... And it just got, because of them, they said, you know, write about what you know. And that was a, actually, How to Ruin a Summer Vacation is the first book that I ever got published. This is How to Ruin a Summer Vacation by Simone Elkalis. And before we say more, let's take a look at a video about How to Ruin a Summer Vacation. We'll okay. be right back.
Welcome back. I'm here with Simone Elkalis. How to Ruin a Summer Vacation. This is your first book. So tell us, yes. how did you come to writing this story? Well, my friend said, write a funny book about Israel because I'm a funny person. I'm always joking around. And so I wanted to write a book about Israel, uh, about a girl who knows nothing about Israel and has to go with her Israeli Jewish father to Israel. But how do you get somebody who doesn't know about Israel um, if, they're, if they're Jewish? So I made her live with her non-Jewish mom. And, but her Jewish Israeli dad, who she really doesn't know, is going to take her to Israel for the summer. And she's like, why would I want to go to a war zone? And she, she thinks that it is how it is on CNN, which is not how it is for not at all. Israelis and for you know, Americans who have family there. So um, she goes there, and she thinks she's going to have the worst summer of her life. And that's why you call it How to Ruin a Summer Vacation. But really, it's how she gets herself in all these ridiculous situations in Israel. It's a, it's a great story, and, and she's a typical uh, Amy, right? Yes, she's Amy. A, she's a typical teenager yes. from America. Kind of a spoiled, uh, spoiled Chicago girl. teen. Yeah, I and, can't and, relate at all, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and here she ends up in Israel, and, and the story, and, the, and your books are really geared for, for teenagers, aren't they? Young yeah. teenagers to older teenagers, Some are younger, on the some are older. This one, like 12 and up, I would uh-huh, say. Uh-huh. And uh, it really did well. You did well with your first I book. I did. And, and was it the publisher that came to you and said, Simone, we want you to write another book? Or was it Simone that came to the publisher and said, I have a great idea, and came up with your second book? Because um, I, I want to I I talk about this book. How to Ruin My Teenage Life by Simone Nicholas. Here we are back in a teenager, another ruined, not a vacation, but a whole life this life. time. Yes, yes. How, how did this one come about? It, it, it's, it's the same girl, isn't it? It's the same later. girl. It's the sequel. And actually, the third one is going to be coming out uh, in October 2009. So I'm excited about that. sequel to number two. It'll be the third in the series. Uh-huh. Unbelievable. So um, that one is, I, listen, I can only write books about Chicago girls because I'm a Chicago girl. Uh-huh. So this is a girl who lives in the city of Chicago. She goes to a private school in the city. Um, and it's the same character, and now she's converting to Judaism Mm -hmm. legally, and um, she's getting herself in all these ridiculous situations in the city and on the Northwestern campus, and she goes to Rosebud to eat dinner, and it's just, it's really fun. It's funny. It's really, it's a cute idea. The whole thing is a cute idea. I know that uh, my kids... I, they finally said to me, I want to read the book. No, I didn't realize Simone wrote those books. I want to read them. Uh, so so what, what is it that made you think of writing about teenagers rather than adults or rather than young kids? How did you, how did you focus in on that, te- that group? And, and let me ask you a second question, yeah. if you'll follow up with that. When you go out and speak to, uh, to groups, is it really teenagers who want to hear you most of all? Uh, teenagers love hearing me. In uh-huh. fact, at Zion Benton High School, um, a girl came up to me, and she was so excited to meet me, she started crying. Aww. That was like the craziest, like most surreal thing. It was so wonderful. Um, How did you get to teenagers? You know, the teenagers come to me. I get hundreds of emails, and, you know, schools come, and libra- school librarians ask me to come speak, and English classes, you know, I speak at English schools, or in, uh, I speak at the juvenile detention centers, because one of my books is about a boy who's leaving a juvenile detention center. I don't know how I got to writing about teens. It just fit. I started writing adult books, and it just didn't mesh with my, with my personality. Uh-huh. I don't. Maybe I'm immature. I don't know. Uh-huh. <laughs> do you, Do you think that writing about um, things that are Jewish in Israel, as as your first two books, uh-huh. especially, uh, start out? Uh, on, on that theme, did that did that bring something close to you? Did you find yourself uh, in Amy's position? Not that you know you're born Jewish and everything like that. Right, Both your course. parents are Jewish, of course. Yeah. But did you find yourself like in in teenage situations like Amy? Absolutely. Some of the situations are you know quasi situations that I've been in, and everywhere she goes in the book in Israel, I've been. She stays on a moshav in the Golan Heights. My husband's family lives on the Golan in the Golan Heights on a moshav, uh-huh. and I set the book there. Um, she goes kayaking down the Jordan River. I've done kayaking down the Jordan River. I climb Masada. She goes to Masada and climbs Masada. Mm-hmm. Um, so everywhere, it's so easy to write a book about you know the Jewish faith because I've lived it. It's my life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it, they, those were easier than I think any of the other books I've written because mm-hmm. it's a little bit she is me. What what is it about writing that gives you satisfaction compared to like when you were in business? You were running a successful company. Mm-hmm. You were you were doing very well. What, what gives you more satisfaction in, in in writing? What is it? Fan mail is so great. Mm -hmm. You know, teens that say, you know, I love your books. They've inspired me to write. Or I love your books because it helped me in a situation that I was in. Or, I mean, teens get really obsessed with the books. They love them Mm -hmm. and can't wait for the next one to come out. And that's, I think, why the publisher 
keeps buying them is because the demand is high for them, because uh -huh. teens love them. So the third sequel to, to Amy's Life, was that something that was brought up by the publisher or something that you asked the publisher that you'd like to do? Um, the publisher came to me and said, we want you to do a third in the series. And so I told them, okay, I'll do the third in the series if I do a sequel to my Leaving Paradise, which I've always wanted to do. So. Well, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's take a look here. This is Leaving Paradise. This is your third book um, about Caleb Becker, right? Yeah. I, the name Caleb Becker seems to stick with me. And um, let's take a look at, at, at your little video about Leaving Paradise right here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. We'll be right back. And we're back, and I'm here with Simone Elkalis, and we are talking about her third book, Leaving Paradise. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this book? Because it's a little bit different than uh, Amy's Holy. life in, 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 in a ruined summer vacation <laughs> and, and a teenage life being ruined. Tell right. us about Leaving Paradise and what it's all about. The other ones are very funny books, and people laugh out loud. Adults laugh out loud to those books, too. Uh, leaving Paradise is totally different. It's kind of more sentimental. It's about a boy leaving a juvenile detention center. He's been in jail for the past year for a hit-and-run drunk driving accident. And in the first chapter, he's being released and having to face a girl who he went to jail for hitting with his car, who he actually ends up falling for. Uh -huh. So it's a little romance in there. A little romance, a little... I have a little romance in all my books. A little danger, a little injury, and... Uh, yes. <laughs> and turns into a little romance. Now, this isn't based on uh, the Israel experience or anything no. like that. So how did you come to this story and, and the characters? Um, there was actually an incident um, in the town where I live and uh, where a girl had stabbed a boy in um, a, a junior high. And it was, like, shocking to me that this 12-year-old girl would be in jail. And it just... Really I, re I happen to me. remember it very well. It was in all the newspapers. For those who, who follow in the newspapers, this one story was, was in the paper for a while it after it happened. just really affected me, a, ch a child having to be in jail. And just, it, it's, no, it's a totally different story. It's about mm -hmm. a boy mm -hmm. being in jail. But I always thought about what that girl had you know, to deal with when she came home because she is a victim, I think, as well as the boy who was stabbed. So in this book, Caleb Becker, who's leaving jail, is also the victim as well as the girl who was hit by you know, the car. And so I just show in alternating chapter point of views, I show both of their, um, the way that they're dealing with what so happened. So what, what are the age groups of Caleb and, and the, the girl that he, uh, you know, Maggie, right? Maggie. What, it's a little edgier. I would say 14 and up. And, and how about um, the age of the characters? Is it, are they teenagers also? They're seniors in high school. They're seniors in high school. For yeah. These. So a little bit older. A little bit older. A little I get a little older. edgier there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. don't know why I do that. Do you like writing... Uh, do you like writing edgier, or do you write writing, you know, more more kid oriented? Uh, or, I think my nat I don't know why my natural ability I think is to write edgier. I have to tone myself down sometimes, especially for the Israel, you know, the Jewish books. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Interesting. I'm sorry, Interesting. Rabbi. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay, Simone. Um, you are, are are very talented. Now, now this book here has. A completely different theme than than the other books. Yeah. Do have you gotten comments from your from your readers that say, "Oh, I miss you know I miss Amy or or I miss I miss you don't talk about Israel or yeah. anything like that." You know, you, obviously you have fans now who come out and and hear you speak. They they follow you around to bookstores. They follow you around to schools and and and, and yeah. libraries. They're uh, super do they, fans. Do they do they come around and they say, you know, why did you do this? Why did you go off from your from your great uh, path? I think they love them both for different reasons. I have never had somebody say, I love Leaving Paradise, but I hated your other books, or I love this How to Ruin books, but I hate Leaving Paradise. I think that 
the fans who love leaving, uh, how to, the How to Ruin books are maybe younger because it's more funny, and the older ones, the like high school age for Leaving Paradise. But they all love them. You know, I don't have a problem with that. I think just the attitude. There's still attitude in the book, and I think all the books have attitude in it, and I think that's what they they love about it: the romance, the attitude, the fun. That's because even S if it's serious, Simone has attitude. So why I shouldn't do, your books? Why shouldn't <laughs> your books? This is great. Um, now you have just completely, even from from these two. Uh, different styles of writing have gone a whole new style for this new book. And it's not out yet, but it will be out by the time this show airs. And mm -hmm. this book is called Perfect Chemistry yeah. by Simone Nicholas. And you did a music video to this yeah. book. I did a rap video, it's actually. It's unbelievable. Stay with us here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. Coming up right now, the rap video from Simone Nicholas and Perfect Chemistry. Ay, Let's do this. Perfect chemistry. By Simone Alcalas. Perfect chemistry. My name is Alex. It's you, Libro, yo. It's a book. My name is Alex. Me llamo Alejandro. I grew up in the streets in the south side barrio. I live with my mother where I live with my brothers. My father's not here. He died like all the others. Hi, I'm Brittany. Just like the singer, my life is perfect. No need to stop and linger. My daddy's rich. My mom's a hottie. In a parking space, she nearly drove her beamer right over my face. I said, Watch where you're going, what you can't drive stick. Mama, I think I could teach you. I think I feel sick. Alex is a jerk. Chemistry's no better. My, my teacher, teacher made his partners in class, class together. together. I'm on the pump squad. The gang is my flock. I have my pom pom. And I have my Glock. Something else. Now those what about are how Jewish little housewife could do that, huh? So, so you wrote this. You, you did you have a co-writer who wrote this with you? You know what? The director that I had hired for to do um, the rap video, he, I had a different rap that um, somebody had helped me write, and then I gave it to him, and he's like, no, it's kind of all wrong, and he wrote it, and I just tweaked it, and he, he was amazing. It's it really, catchy. It is catchy. It's catchy. It's a book. Perfect chemistry by Simone Nicholas. It's a book. <laughs> yes. It's it's my great. kids go around, they're like, Mom, I'm like, what? They're like, it's a book. <laughs> you know. It's, it's great. Fun. It's fun. great. I, yeah. I absolutely love it. I, what talent you have. See, and, it's and, edgy. And, and you got some really talented people to get in there with it yes, to do it. very talented And people. these are Chicagoland actors, huh? They are. Great. Amazing. Great. I was so blown away by their ability. I'm sure. And they're going... When do I get my copy of the books, Simone? <laughs> I know. I promise them all a copy. I'm going to send them all a copy. Great. Well, we look forward to it coming out. So tell us a little bit about Perfect Chemistry. It's, it's again, school teenagers. It's, again, you know, got that connection to the school experience and... Chicago and, suburbs, and, again. And relationships. <laughs> yep. And so tell us a little bit about this book since it's not out because people are wondering, am I going to like this book because I read her other three books? Right. I think if you read my other three books and you like them, you'll love this one, too. Um, it's definitely a romantic novel for bo teen boys and girls. It's told in the male point of view and the female point of view in alternating chapters like Leaving Paradise. It's about a Hispanic gang member who falls for this rich white girl in his class. And um, she wants him to leave the gang, but, you know, there is no leaving the gang. It's tough. So it's kind of the struggles trying to um, mesh their lives together when they live totally separate lives. Very cool. Very cool. And I love it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I and, made the rap video. And the publisher loves it? Publisher loves it. My fans, I think, are going to go crazy for this now, book. Now, with a book like this, yeah. before you go ahead and publish it, do you like to put like, sample chapters together and, and, and send them out to fans or to, to, to an age group and have them read it and say, do you like this type of story? Do, do you get feedback like that? Or is it something that the publisher says, you know, we've got something going, let's go with it right away? I think the publisher has teen readers that read it before they buy it. Uh -huh. I think they have focus groups that will focus read it. Focus groups that yeah. do that. That's it's very to say, cool. oh, we love this, and I was like, okay, great. Now, do you get do you get fan letters that say, when is your next book coming out, or do you have another book coming out? All the time, really? probably daily. Really? Yes. Really. How? I, don't give me a, a yeah. money figure or anything, but how many books do you think you've sold? I know you don't have an exact figure. Do you have any idea how many books you've sold between the three books that are out? I, you know, I really don't know. It's it's funny because every six months you d you get like a, a thing from your publisher, and it's really like your rap sheet. <laughs> your rap sheet, but it's it, it's not even representative because it's always ongoing. It's it, and if it's sold in the you know bookstores and uh, every, other places other and places, whatever whatever, whatever. And, and people reading it in libraries, you don't know how many read it. Of know. course. Now now tell me, is is the book? Um, does the publisher uh, publish the book all over the world, all over the United States, all over North America, United States, Canada? How, do, how does it work? How does the publisher decide, and how do you find out where your book is is being spread out for, for knowledge? Obviously, probably the Internet is there, of course. But right. what, about, what about places that people can actually walk in and, and open it up, like in libraries? Let's say libraries. Is it in Canadian libraries? Yes. Is it only in U.S. libraries? No, it's all over the world, even in London. It's all over the world. And in fact, just a couple weeks ago, How to Ruin a Summer Vacation, I got these books in the mail. I'm like, what are they? I don't know what they are. And the cover was weird. And it ended up, it was a letter saying, you know, my publisher has just sold the rights um, in Croatia. So it was um, How to Ruin a Summer Trans Vacation. To be translated? It was translated into a book in Croatian. Wow. It's not in Hebrew yet, which oh. is like crazy to oh, me. Oh, that was my next it's question. It's crazy to me. I don't know. It's in Croatian. Uh-huh. Um, instead of, and, and I'm hoping it needs to be in Hebrew. I, wow. I'm hoping that Well, it yeah, is. that would be great. That is, was, that is just amazing. It was you the must coolest been, thing. I can't read it, but you know. And you, you didn't, and you had no idea that this was going to be taking place. No. The publisher made all the arrangements. You know, they sell it, and then you get, you know. Uh, the, you get some kind of royalties yeah. from it. Yeah, in as six it months, out. I'll get the royalty Every whatever, six months, whatever. yeah, for the rest of my life. That's great. In my kids' great. lives. Yeah, that, that is like really wonderful. Kind of. Uh, it's great for mom. A, it's a legacy for your children to carry on. Yeah. You know, even if you stopped writing, you still have that legacy of the past. Yeah. Uh, that, that carries on into the future. My kids those think it's cool. I'm sure they do. I think it's cool. I'm, I'm like honored to know that you're, you know, you're, you're Simone. <laughs> and this is great. This is great. Is, is Perfect Chemistry like the perfect book to you? I know that when you wrote these other books, you kind of had a, a focus and you also had like a, a limit to where you could go as far as, you know, being on the edge. Yeah. This book kind of goes over the edge a little bit. Is, is Definitely this, goes over the edge. Do, do you feel like it, it's like the perfect Simone Elkalis book? I I do, although, the, you know, the Jewish one, because How to Ruin a Summer it's, Vacation it's more is me. I mean, uh, this uh. is, I had to do a lot of research for, so it was harder. But because it was harder, you, you put more energy into it, and it's uh -huh. like, it now, really means a lot to you. Do, you. do you identify with characters in this book? Is, it, is there an identity of, like, oh, I had an old relationship with someone I shouldn't have had a relationship with, and, and this, and the, or, or, or where it, it was just never going to work? I mean, do you, do you find your own identity, even though the characters have nothing to do with you or your life, do you find an identity in the character that, that, that somehow goes in your head? I think you have to. In order to have the main character, you fall in love with the main character no matter who it is. Uh, you, a little piece of them is a piece of you. So absolutely, I, I'm, I'm very involved with the characters. They are my family, they're part of me. It's hard to let them go at the end. Uh -huh. You're happy to see them go, but you're sad to see them go too. So this book is finished and gonna be out very, very soon. What's next? Is it the part three? Is, it's it, the third in the How to Ruin series. Amy's going back to Israel. Uh -huh. Not gonna tell you what happened. Okay, do we, <laughs> do we have a title yet? I don't know a title yet. You don't know a title yet. I yes. know that sometimes those change also by the time All they're the published. All the time, right. Uh -huh. um, now, did you come up with the titles yourself, or did the publisher suggest them? How did they come about? That's like, for example, question. let's go back to the very first book, yeah. How to Ruin a Summer Vacation. Um, you know, I, I'm sure there was uh, the visit to the Moshav, or, <laughs> or going to Israel for the first time when I didn't want to go, or, right. or am I going to a war zone? Who, who knows what titles <laughs> must have come up, because they, any of those could have could have fit in. Right. How did how did how to ruin a summer vacation come up first? Um, 
I, I think it was with me as a kid. My dad wanted to take, my dad was Israeli, wanted to take me to Israel, and I wanted to go to tennis camp or go to camp with my friends. And I'm like, Ugh, going to Israel is going to ruin my summer vacation. Mm -hmm. And of course, you go and you have the best time ever. But you know, you're an American teenager from Chicago. You want to be with your friends for the summer. So you think anything else is the worst. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that I actually named that How to Ruin a Summer Vacation in Three Short Months. Mm -hmm. And they thought that was repetitive, which I tend to be sometimes. So they cut out the in three short months. When, when, you're, when you're writing these books, and, and this is a big question, I'm sure it happens with every author, do you end up revising your, your writing after it goes to the publisher 10 times, 20 times before you get a final version? You get, once it goes to the publisher, they'll give you changes and you do your changes, and I hate changes because I'm like lazy, but um, and then you get a couple more copies and then you get what's called an advanced reader copy. And there's all, you, that's the last time you can make changes. Mm -hmm. And if you make mistakes, or it's, it's going in the book. Okay, so let's, let's go before it goes to the publisher the first time. Um, did you rewrite the book a number of times before it went to the publisher? Tons of times. I, until you read it and you're like, I don't even know what I'm reading anymore because you've read the same line 50 times. Uh -huh. so, so let me go fine. with me. Like for example, yes. when, when I do a TV show and tape yeah. a TV show, I sometimes get started on editing it late at night, you know, 8 oh, o'clock, yeah. 9 o'clock at night, and I end up editing till 3, 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning sometimes because you're, you're so into it, your adrenaline is flowing and, and it's looking the way you want it to look and you don't want to stop until it's you know at a point where you feel good about it. Mm -hmm. Is it the same thing with writing that you start writing and all of a sudden next thing you know it's like 4 o'clock in the morning because you're just in the middle of something that you can't put it down when, when the thought is there? Yeah, sometimes it's like that where you were like so into a scene and then sometimes you're like, ugh, I don't like this scene. I can't wait to get over, you know, yeah. I can't, I don't even want to do it. I need it. to go to sleep. <laughs> right, right. Well, and, this this is exactly we're, we're in the same business there. Right. <laughs> Listen, Simone, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. Time just thank flies, you. and this was just great. I wish you much success with Perfect Chemistry. Thank you. Uh, once again, it's coming out soon, and uh, by the time you see the show, it's probably out. So take a look at it. If you um, want to drop us an email for Simone, you can email us at info at tvrabbi.com. I'll pass it on to her. She'll give you any information you want to know about her books, and I'm sure she'll get back to you. Uh, if you want to see us on the web or check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com is the place to look. I want to thank you all for being with us. Remember, we're on every week at this time. I want to thank Simone Elkalis for being with thank us. You. Thank you so much. And hope to see all of you next time right here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. Shalom, everyone. This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.